Hello and welcome back to my Hawaiian Grand Prix toy box. Last time we finished the build exercise for this toy box and today I'm going to start showing you how to build the different features on the course beginning with the exploding bridge. Now to save a little time I've already placed the creativa toys that I'm going to need so let's take a look at those. We have here a replayer we have a logic gate, an effects generator, the sound effects generator, and a second effects generator. And I've also placed a trigger area up here at the top of the slope coming up that hill. So when the player crests the hill, the bridge will explode. And so the first thing we're going to want to do is put the bridge in. And I've got some locators down, and I'll show you where those are placed in a moment. It'll be a bit easier to see where those are once I get the bridge in. But I'm not going to be able to put the bridge in until I move these ramp pieces here. Because if you'll remember from the build exercise, when I try to put this uh, bridge piece in, it's colliding with that uh, ramp there off to the left. And so I'm not going to be able to put that bridge in there until I get this out of the way. So the first thing we're going to do is pick this up and move it up a little ways. And we'll do the same thing with the one over on this end. We'll just pick that up a little bit. And now we can go ahead and put in the bridge. And to make it explode, we need to be able to take it in and out at will, and that's why we're using the replayer. So I'm going to come in here to the replayer properties, and I'm going to set the playback interval to zero, because I want the entire bridge to appear or disappear simultaneously, all of those pieces at the same time. All right, so the replayer is set up. Let's go ahead and step on the replayer to get the menu in the lower right. And on my Wii U, I press B to record, and then I can step off of that in order to get back into the editor. And now we can put the bridge in. And so now that is lined up. And we need three bridge pieces. Just like that. And then we can go ahead and exit out of the editor step on the replayer and press B again on my Wii U to stop recording and A to clear. And that takes the bridge back out. And now we can put the ramp pieces back in place. We'll just drop those right down where they were. And there we go. And so now when we do the playback on the replayer, it should work fine. <laughs> it shouldn't be any problem because it doesn't really collide with those ramp pieces. So if I come over here and do a playback, there's my bridge and everything is fine. All right. And once again, before I continue onward, I just want to refer back to the very first episode in this series and remind you that the only way this works without crashing my entire system is because these bridge pieces are not part of the actual racetrack. These are sitting up above the track. This track isn't connected to the racetrack start piece over at the starting line these pieces below the terrain are. And this is what the race cars are following, are these pieces down here. So if this were connected directly to the racetrack start piece over there, um, and we tried to take these out with a replayer, we'd crash the system, and uh, that would be bad. <laughs> so this is how we're able to do that. All right, now that we have the bridge in here, you can kind of see where these three locators are placed. This first one is right on the seam, and you can see where the little blue dot is facing. 
It's right in the middle of the road, right on the seam of those two racetrack pieces, the bridge and the edge of the cliff there. And then these locators here are over on the edge right in front of these first uh, struts. So there's one here facing that way, there's one here facing the other way. And it's important that each of these locators be facing a different direction because we're going to be hooking up the same effects generator to all three of these. And if they're all facing the same direction, all three of those explosions are going to look identical. But by, re by turning them, uh, it'll look different when you're coming this direction. So it'll look like one big massive explosion, not three explosions that are identical happening at the same time. So this first effects generator, we're going to go ahead and hook up to those locators. And we'll connect this one up up here. And again, this is just doing from the logic menu a new locator connection on each of these. And one more. New locator connection. up there. Okay, so the effects generator is hooked up. And the last thing we need then, uh, well, oops, one more thing. Let's go ahead and set the properties on the sound generator. So if we come under properties, we want to make sure this 3D sound at speaker or locator is turned off, because I want the player to be able to hear that from way over at the trigger area when they initiate the explosion. So this trigger area, as I said, I've got set up right at the top of the slope, right here at the seam between that racetrack piece and that one. And it stretches across the entire width, so there's no way the player can miss this. So on this trigger area, we're going to do a new logic connection when entered by player any. The first thing I want to do is come over to my effects generator and we're going to play an explosion that will cover up our removing the bridge. And it'll also look pretty cool. So we're going to play one time out of the explosions category, the huge explosion. And then that's just the visual effect. So we also need to do a new logic connection when entered by player any. I want to come over to the sound generator and play the sound effect that goes along with that. And you'll find that under the action category. It's the large explosion sound. Alright, so then once we're playing the explosion, then we can go ahead and remove the bridge. And the order of this, it kind of happens simultaneously, but not really. Um, so that's why I do the explosion first, before I remove the actual bridge. So on the trigger area, we do a new logic connection when entered by player any. The third thing we'll do is come over to the replayer. And clear it. Because, as I said, those uh, things don't actually happen simultaneously. They happen pretty quick. But if you do those in reverse order, it'll start the replayer clearing before the explosion happens. And once in a while, you'll actually see the bridge disappear before the explosion starts. And so this way, this order makes sure that doesn't happen. So now we're removing the bridge, and that will look pretty good. Um, Now, I only want to do this one time, so the second time the player comes through here, or if you're racing with two players, the second player that comes through here, I don't want to do this a second time. And so we need to disable this trigger area, and that's why we have this logic gate set up over here. So the next thing we're going to do on this trigger area, we're going to do a new logic connection when entered by player any. We're going to come over to our logic gate that's over here, and I'm not using the open-close behavior on this, I'm just using it as a pass-through. 
So on this gate, we're going to do an input. And then on the logic gate, a new logic connection on output. We'll come up to the trigger area and deactivate it. And when we deactivate it, we're going to need a way to restore it. Um, and it's a good idea to have a reset button anyway, in case you want to play this multiple times. And so we'll come back to the Creativity Toys drawer, and I forgot to put this down, but we'll go ahead and drop our button over here. Eventually, we'll move this over to the beach near the finish line. So this will be our reset button for the toy box. And on this reset button, we're going to do several things. So we're going to do a new logic connection when pressed. We want to come back up and reactivate this trigger area. So we're basically going to use it to put the toy box back in its initial state. So we need to turn the trigger area on. The second thing we need to do on the button is a new logic connection when pressed. I want to do a playback on the replayer. And then there's one more thing we're going to need to do, but uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and test the bridge exploding. So I'm going to come over here and exit out of spark mode. All right, so as we come up to the top of the bridge and we pass through that trigger area, there goes the bridge <laughs> and it's all gone. So that is really cool. All right, now I've got the rubble down there as kind of a reminder that the bridge used to exist. And just to make it interesting, it'd be nice if it were kind of still smoldering from the explosion. And so we're going to add some smoke to do that. And that's why I have this second effects generator down here. And to save a little bit of time, I've already connected that up to all of the locators that I've got scattered throughout the debris. Let me just show you where those are. So I've got one sitting here. I've got another one sitting out here. And these aren't in a perfect line, as you can kind of see looking down the way. They're staggered a little bit. The next one is off to the right a little bit, up here. The next one is over here. And again, you'll notice the little blue dot on each of these is facing a different direction, so that the smoke plume doesn't look identical. It'll actually be turned. So the next one faces that way. And the next locator is over here, about halfway between that debris and the cliff wall. And you don't need a lot of locators. I've got six of them here, and I think that's sufficient. So that's pretty good. So then to set the smoke off, we want to come back again to our trigger area over here and do a new logic connection when entered by player any. We'll come over to that second effects generator for the smoke. And we're going to play looped out of the smoke category. The smoke plume. And that means our reset button will also need to stop that when we want to reset the toy box. So a new logic connection when pressed on the button come over to that effects generator and stop looping the effects. And so there we go. Let's go ahead and test it all together. And the first thing we want to do is go ahead and restore the toy box to its, in, its initial state. So there's our bridge back again. And then we'll come over here and run through that trigger area one more time. This time we should see the smoke coming up from the rubble. And there's all the smoke. <laughs> and again, you don't need a lot of it. As you can see, as you're coming down the road, um, that's quite enough to show you what's happening. That that bridge is still smoldering and was recently destroyed. So that's pretty good. 
I like the way that looks. And you might stick one more over in here, but you don't really need to. So that's how I built the exploding bridge. Next time, we'll work on the mines that roll down the hill. Until then, I want to thank you for watching today, and I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done that, so you don't miss the next episode. To subscribe, just click my photo in the lower right corner. That's all for me today. Have a great weekend.